My decision to go natural happened by accident. Um, I had gotten frustrated with the beauticians that I was going to um, for all sorts of reasons. Um, mostly and mainly, the reasons were had the wait time at the salons. That was one of the biggest things, one of my biggest pet peeves. And the other reason was not being satisfied with the <laughs> with my hair once I left the salon. Or oh, and actually I'll say it's a third reason. Um, not being happy with the length, my the way my hair um was growing, I was ne never able to see the results of my growth because when I would go into the salon and they would do my hair, they were forever clipping my ends. And it may be that they really needed that, but it was just, it was just, I just felt like my hair could grow if they would just stop cutting it all the time and I would see some length. But the biggest, the, the last straw for me when I went to the hairdresser, and you know, I really couldn't afford the upkeep of, of relaxers the way I should have been going to the salon. Or maybe it would have been nice if the people that I, that I was going to, if they, would, if they would have told me how to maintain the styles at home. They gave me like a brief little story of how, what I should do. But like giving me, telling me how to take care of my hair so it would be healthy. I kept running into beauticians that did not want to tell me what they were using on my hair. They didn't want to tell me how to maintain the styles. What the, all they wanted was my money. They just wanted me to keep coming back. Even if I had to come back every other day, that was fine with them. It wasn't about helping me take care of my hair on my own. Because I used to tell them, I'm like, I can never get my hair to look like you. You have it looking. But that was then. <laughs> but anyway, I could never. And a lot of times... I didn't even like how they had it looking anyway, so, um, or, or I, maybe I did like how it looked, but it would only last a day or so. For me, it was usually like a day, and then I'm looking crazy again. Um, and that was because I just didn't have the knowledge to take care of my hair at home. So what happened was, um, one day I was going to this particular beautician, and, I was trying to find ways to cut cut my costs of going to the hairdresser. And so I asked her, I said, um, what if I wash my own hair before coming to coming to you and you did the rest? How much would you charge? She said, full price. And I was like, really? She said, yeah, full price. And I said, oh, okay. Because I've known other beauticians that was willing to work with you and you know, they know that you don't have, you know, money to keep coming back to the beautician a lot. And you're trying to find ways to trim your budget. And I know that they have to make their money too, but I just knew <laughs> this wasn't possible for me. Well, I could go, but it was just a strain on my budget. So, um, and see, another thing is I've always had hair that needed to be, um, like rinsed or something because of my gray hair. I started graying very early and... That wasn't something I could skip, I, you know, because I was trying to keep my gray covered at that time. So, you know, I was just trying to find every little way that I could to, you know, save some money. And she just wasn't willing. And I said, you know what? I know what I'm going to do. I canceled my appointment with her because I, I had an appointment and I called back. I was just so disturbed by her attitude. Oh, I know. Because after I said, you know, she said full price, she said, um... She she made some comment like, um, how's that helping me? <laughs> I just didn't like that attitude at all. And so I just called her back and said, I need to cancel my appointment. And she was like, okay. Didn't ask me why. Didn't ask me if I want to reschedule. Just didn't care. And I, I decided right then and there, this was probably back in 2004. It was, I think it was 2004. Um... And so 
I said to I decided that I was just going to get a wig. I said, well, at least if I can find a wig that I like, uh, it'll be that style will last more than one day. That's what I said to myself. So, and I went and I found a wig and I wore it. I wore it and um, okay. So then I was wearing the wig, but I knew I needed to take care of my hair. And so what I did, I started looking on the internet, trying to find sites that, you know, like hair boards that could help me with my hair. And I stumbled upon, um, first I, just, I found the lady, um, Kathy House, I found her site, and I thought that was very exciting about how she, you know, she'd tell you how to take care of her hair, and she had products and everything, so I, I got into that a little bit, but I, you know, that wasn't enough for me, I wanted more support, so I found the Long Hair Care Forum, because I, I still always wanted to have long hair, and so when I saw that, I said, well, I'll go in here, and learn how to self-relax. That was my whole purpose of, of going on long hair care. And um, I found a whole lot of helpful and supportive people there. And I loved it. And I even found someone. I always wanted to use the um, Affirm Relaxers. And I, was t you know, I saw people on there that was using that with great success. And, and it was supposed to be like a better relaxer. And... Um, I found someone locally that was selling her. She had a mild relaxer, and I, and at the time I didn't even know anything about my hair, the texture, the you know what, what strength I needed, and so I always thought I had very very kinky, just the, you know the kinkiest curl pattern ever. I didn't know what my, cause I you know I didn't know what my hair was like, and but I always got that impression from the uh, beauticians, so I found someone that had that. But in the meantime, it had, and I bought it from her, a tub of it from her, and it had been like a long time since I had gotten a relaxer, and I was, I had been washing my hair, because I had been learning how to take care of it from the boards, so I had been washing my hair, and um, I found out about shea butter, basically what I was doing every night was um, washing my hair, well, I might be getting ahead of myself, because it's, it's been a long time ago since since I started doing this, but it it got to I'm trying to think I think I was just washing my hair and greasing it and all that stuff or keeping it moisturized underneath the wig um and at some point I started reading about people who were who was who were going natural and I tried to well under the wig I wasn't doing anything I had not had a relaxer so basically I was transitioning um, before I even knew what transitioning was and it got my hair got to a length the um, new growth got to a length where I felt like I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off these relaxed ends I'm just gonna go natural and um, I never did use the I never I never used the relaxer I was just too nervous to do that because I've always messed up my hair doing that so trying to do it myself and I decided you know what I'm just gonna see what my hair is really like and I found someone who did natural hair and I went to her and she basically gave me a twist she twisted my hair and um she cut off my relaxed ends and so I had I had decent length probably three four inches of um of um new growth so I didn't really do the bit chop. I felt like it was a bit chop though, because it was so much shorter than what I was used to. Um, and I was really nervous about wearing my hair out without the wig. And that same day, I left the I left the natural hair salon, and I went to a store. And one of the first people I saw in the store, she complimented me on my hair, and it really gave me a boost of confidence because I was feeling like it was ugly, and or that I was looking ugly with it, and it just really helped me out when she did that. So I, that was really the beginning of my um, decision to go natural. Um, I've had a lot of ups and downs with my hair. My hair has been cut a few times because I was um, coloring it and. Really, I probably don't wasn't deep conditioning it right and con just keeping it moisturized like I should. And I've you know had a lot of uh, split ends and just cut those off. And so I've had about maybe two two starts with this. Um, next time I I got so frustrated with my hair that um, I did decide to, to put a relaxer in it. Just 
put it in real quick and take it out real quick. And I did some damage there because I really never got the hang of doing my own relaxers. Um, so, I, so basically, and when I did that, I had to end up getting my hair cut and I start messing with, with the beauticians again and having a whole nother set of issues with same different beauticians, same problems. So, um, I don't mean to bash beauticians, but I just have not, I've only had maybe one or two good ones and things end up not working out with those two. So, um, I, I'm at the point now where I just do my own hair. Um, I get so much good information on YouTube and that's basically where I get it from now. But I was before YouTube getting off the, um, long hair care forum. I really like that forum. You should check them out. Um, but that was basically my decision. Um, I, I have, I have been able to do so much more with my hair being natural than I ever could when it was relaxed. And, you know, I can, I'm changing my styles basically every day. And I'm loving it. I don't regret it. I wish I'd done it sooner. And recently, I made the decision to not color my hair anymore. Um, because, as you can see, I have an abundance of gray hair. And it's not like a few strands here and there. It's like, bam, all over my hair head. So, um, it was best for me to not color it anymore because that's a whole other issue. And... You know, I tried the henna, but the henna makes it red. And, like, I understand people that have dark hair that use the henna, but mine is, you know, mine is light hair. And so henna is red, and it makes your hair orangey, and it makes your hair reddish-orange. And um, you have to use another step, the um, indigo, and that bleeds like crazy. Um, it's just too much for me. And I just... So I had to build up my confidence to do the gray as well. Um, and I, and so at first it was hard. The first day I went to work without my wig on because what had happened was after I started wearing my hair out, I got so tired of the cycling with the color in my hair and the gray showing that I, started, I went right back to the wig because it was just so much easier to not have to worry about coloring all the time. So I just decided one day, I said, you know, God... God gave me this gray hair just like God gave me this natural hair. And, you know, I'm going to wear it proudly. And that's exactly what I decided to do. Um, just do it. <laughs> it was really hard. I talked about it for a long time, probably a year. I talked about it for a year um, saying that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to wear my hair gray. I don't know when. I, I wish I could. I said, I wish I could. And then one day I said, you know what? I can and I am. And... It's so funny because people looked at me so strangely um, <laughs> when I when I did it for the first day. And I know I, the way I wore it was probably the most shocking because I wore it like up. And all you could see is just a mound of gray hair. And um, they just looked at me. They didn't say anything. They didn't say I like it. I had one lady, my um, my uh, supervisor, my manager actually, she complimented me, complimented me because I had been talking to her about wanting to do it. And she was like, you can do it, and she would show me, um, point out people that had pretty um, gray hair with nice hairstyles. Most of those women had relaxers too, and I thought maybe that was um, what I what I needed to make it look nice—a relaxer. So I wasn't really sure about being natural and gray, um, but since I've done it, I'm very happy. Uh, and like most new hairstyles, I don't like them at first. And it takes getting used to, and it takes people around you getting used to it. They weren't used to the gray at first, and they I don't think they liked it. But as I, as my confidence has grown and my experimenting with different styles, I'm getting more and more compliments. And, you know, it's, like, amazing how it just turned around. But in the back of my mind, I kind of knew that people would just get used to seeing me this way and then it, it would just be accepted. That's how I am. That's how my hair looks now. And that's basically what's happening. And um, I'm loving it. And it's, you know, the texture of the gray hair, it's like, to me, it feels softer. Um, but, and then people would tell me, Charlotte, you know, you you don't look old with the gray hair. Um, sometimes I, I think I do, but... It's, it's it's basically your attitude, and um, I, I I don't regret it. I was gonna say something else, 
remember what it was about that. But I know that <laughs> one of my reasons at first for not wanting to go gray, um, to show my gray, um, is because I am single and I was worried about um, dating and, you know, meet, wanting to meet guys with uh and I'm 44, and I always said, you know, I didn't mind dating a little younger, like maybe um, late 30s. or, And I just didn't think that anybody in that age range would be interested in um, me with my hair gray. Um, that would just seem make. I felt like they would look at me as a lot older than what I was. Or maybe somebody in that age range might want somebody that looks more youthful. Um but I, you know, I, I didn't even care anymore. I, once I made the decision, I didn't care anymore, and um, that didn't stop me from from dating. And I have a boyfriend now, and he likes my hair. Um, so, but you know, whether he did or didn't, I had already made up my mind. This is what I was going to do. I wasn't going to color anymore, and and I think that once you accept yourself for the way you are, other people will too, and so. It's my phone, and I'm at the end anyway, so I just wanted to share that with you all, and hopefully it is it is it it inspired someone, and um, I guess I'll see you on my next video. Bye. Thank you.